Thank you for the intro. Yeah, so my name is Tammy Levy, and I'm going to basically just go through some of the big learnings that we've uh, found along the years on ad monetization. And a big thing here is ad networks, ads, putting ads in your game has been a little bit um, kind of, as a game developer, you're a little bit hesitant of doing this. Am I spamming my players? Is this a good experience for my players? And we found that if you do it right, it's not a bad experience for your players. It's actually a really good experience, and it boosts your revenue. So best of both worlds. Uh, just a little bit of background on Congregate. So Congregate started about 10 years ago as a web platform, open web platform. We have over 100,000 games uh, on the website. In recent years, we moved on to being a publisher. Uh, we're both a free-to-play publisher with over 30 games uh, in the App Store and uh, App Stores and a premium publisher now with games on uh, Steam, Xbox, and uh, more consoles coming soon. Um, so when we're talking about ads, we actually have to break it down on the different types of ads um, that are out there in the ecosystem. First, we have banners. Uh, these are the top kind of banners at the top or the bottom of the game. They're persistent. They're there while you're playing a game. We usually don't see a lot of revenue out of these uh, ads. Some, some other games have found really good success with these. Offer walls, these were more popular back on the web days, but we've actually seen really good results with them. And these are just sets of offers, basically surveys, install this game, uh, sign up for the service as a trial, and in exchange you get uh, in-game currency. Interstitials, these are kind of the usually what people think of the most disruptive ones, and that's because you know you load the game, you're playing, you finish a run or uh, a match, and then you get an ad. And rewarded videos. So these are really uh, kind of the key uh, ad units these days. And these are videos that players opt into watching. So you're not pushing them to the players. You're giving them the opportunity to watch an ad. And in exchange, they can get a reward in the game. So the revenue growth that we've seen, uh, we've actually done this by doing very deliberate ad management and working with the teams that, uh, the developers that we work with to make sure that, as I said, these are not disruptive. So it's very deliberate and intentional ad management, both on the developer side, on how they're designing them into the game, and on the publisher side, on how we're managing them with the ad networks. Um, these days, we put in all ads in all our games. Um, there's a misconception that only casual games or only certain types of games will benefit from this. We've actually seen really good revenue from just all types of games, and all our new games have ads integrated into them. And best of, of everything is that we haven't really seen any uh, IP revenue being cannibalized. So this is all just added revenue. Um, so from 2014, where we were generating less than 1% of our revenue off of ads, um, this year we're uh, doing about 27 to 30% of our revenue from ads. Um, so breaking that down into the type of ads uh, that I mentioned before, as I said, rewarded video is really kind of the, the, where the meat is. It's kind of the biggest share of the pie, um, we see about 85% of the, of the ad revenue come from rewarded video. Um, but we also see really good results from offer wall, and this especially with games that are IP driven. So games that where players, you know, they're consuming a lot of items in the game and, you know, economy is, is more complex. We see that offer, wor offer walls do really well. And in general, just we see anywhere from 10 to 16 percent, uh, 60 percent of revenue for a game come from ads. So kind of just quick math, if your game is doing 100K a month, imagine adding 10K more just from doing a simple ad integration at least. So that's, that's pretty impactful for your team and your studio. So uh, going to talk about three key metrics to keep in mind when we're talking about optimizing ads. The first one is fill rate. So this is um, what percentage of ad requests, so when a player hits you know, watch ad, how many times is there actually an ad available? 
different games deal with this uh, differently when there's not an ad available. Some of them just ha have a pop-up that says, sorry, try again later. Uh, some of them even disable the button. So what percentage of those requests are actually being filled? Impressions, this is, you know, once that a request happens successfully, how many impressions, how many total ad views are you getting every day? And the CPM, so that is uh, how much revenue are you generating for every thousand impressions? And there's really three uh, key points on, on optimizing, or three key elements to optimize those three areas. Um, and I'll go into a little bit more detail for each of these. And the first one is uh, diversifying your networks, and that's going to increase your fill rate. Designing your ads, again, this is, I can't emphasize this enough, this is the key for successfully generating revenue out of ads and managing your networks. Let's start with uh, diversifying. So fill rate. Um, quick example, this is fill rate for one network. So imagine you go and just choose network A and put that into your game. Um, what we see is generally a single network can fulfill about 45 to 60 percent of the requests uh, being made by the game. And imagine that is basically half of the people that want to give you money, you're telling them, I don't want your money. Um, so that, that is huge. Um, to combat that, uh, it's very easy. Just integrate multiple ad networks. This increases the ads available, which more ads means higher fill rate, and means that you're providing good US user experience to your players, because every time they want to watch an ad, there will be an ad available for them to watch. And if you know they're counting on that bonus to play the game, you want them to, to be able to have that experience. But integrating five, 10 different networks, as, Jim, as James was saying, there's a lot of networks out there. Uh, it's really hard and it's time consuming. So there's actually technology these days that helps with this. Uh, and it's ad mediation. So these are ad networks that actually provide a single SDK that you can integrate into your game. And from there, you enable certain networks. Um, so with a single integration, you can get six, 10 networks working all at the same time. Additionally, they have some auto optimizations. So they have algorithms that will try to generate the most revenue for the game based on all those networks. That is usually called a waterfall. So, um, basically, it just orders them by um, value and then just serve. If there's n not an ad available for the first one, it goes to the second one and so on and so forth. Um, and you get unified reporting instead of having to go to 10 different sites to see how much revenue am I generating from each of the networks. I can see it all in a single place. So when we do that, we actually see um, it's almost 100% fill rate. And uh, that is basically what you want. You want anywhere between 98 to 100% fill rate. If you still see that you're not getting to that 100% fill rate, one of the things that we do is we actually have um, what we call house ads. So as the last option, you can show ads for other games um, within your, your studio. And that will make sure that it's just basically providing that good experience to your players that every time they want to watch an ad and get that reward, they'll be able to do it. Next is uh, design. So here we want to maximize the number of impressions that you're getting. So how many ad views are happening every day in your game? Um, there's two KPIs that you have to keep in mind when optimizing this. So first, also make sure that you're tracking these. Um, first one is percentage of your daily active users engaging with your ads. Uh, this is how many players are engaging with your ads on a daily basis. Uh, we see that a good target here is over 50%. Um, Adventure Capital is the first game that really nailed this, started with 40%, and we've been actually with, through uh, experimenting and testing new placements and, and new ways of surfacing this, we've actually been able to get to 
almost 60%, and that's actually across most of our portfolio. Uh, even mid-core games, animation throwdown, a, a CCG, a game where you wouldn't think, oh, I'm going to throw ads in there. We see also 60% of our DAU engaging with ads. Uh, the next one is ad views per player. So this is really important because when we're talking about maximizing impressions, um, you could think, well, I'm just going to make sure that they're watching like 20 ads every day. Um, it's, a, it's actually a tricky balance. You want to make sure that there's somewhere between 5 to 10 ad views per player per day. So you want to balance your game in, in such a way where there's like cooldown timers or the way you're surfacing your ads gets you to that sweet spot of, of 5 to 10. Once you pass that threshold, you're actually uh, getting diminishing returns uh, for the ads that you're showing. So it's not really worth pushing that much uh, beyond the, the 10 ads. So the first thing that you need to do is have a good, good visual design. Um, Adventure Capitalist does this really well where, you know, there's an ad, um, a button on the bottom of the screen. It's persisting, persistent. You can always access it. It's really easy. You won't forget, you know, it's, it's on your main screen. It's not intrusive, but you do remember to do it every single time that you're opening up the game. Uh, multiple placements. This is something that we've been testing on a few other games and kind of using these learnings across our portfolio, where um, the first game to test this was Pocket Politics, uh, another idle game. And the three key placements that they put into the game when it launched uh, were the welcome back bonus. So you come back to the game and you can kind of get 50% plus on whatever you generated when you were offline. Most players just do that immediately. The uh, main multiplier, this is the same as uh, Adventure Capitalist, and um, something that we call ad hoc ads. And this is basically, th that's what they are. It, they show up randomly when you're playing the game. It's not intrusive, but it's just the, the little TV shows up and it starts shaking. Um, you tap on it, and it gives you different types of rewards. So sometimes you might get a multiplier, sometimes you might get um, a time warp, so you can fast forward in time. Sometimes you might get gold. So it just varies the rewards. So in this case, uh, Pocket Politics sees somewhere between 60 and 70% engagement rate uh, with ads. But once you break it down by these placements, you can actually see that there's not a single uh, placement that drives that 60 to 70 percent. They stack up. So what's happening here is that different players are interested in different types of optimizations and boosts, and they're just going to engage with the game differently. So if you provide more options, you're going to be able to capture a bigger audience. Um, and this is, this is extremely important, meaningful rewards. It used to be that uh, most games would give you one gold when you watch an ad. And, you know, when you start the game, one gold for whatever economy you balanced might be really, really good. But three days into the game, maybe it's, it's nothing. It's, like, it's not worth my 25 seconds of, of watching an ad. Um, so it's really important to make sure that ads are part of the core loop. In this case, Adventure Capitalist was the first one to do this, where it was like it just felt part as part of the core loop of the game, as part of the experience. Where I'm choosing to progress slower in the game if I don't engage with the ads, and it makes it a really fun experience to the players because they're trying to also ma it's another thing that they're trying to min max. They're trying to make sure that they're logging in at the right time to watch uh, you know, the, the most ads that they can to progress faster. Um, another thing that we've tested in terms of uh, meaningful rewards, this is uh, an animation throwdown, again, a mid-core game that you wouldn't think, oh, let me add ads, is incremental rewards. So the first uh, ad that you watch, you get, say, a 10% boost on your rewards. The next ad that you watch, it bumps it up to 30 the next ad that you watch, it bumps it out to 50%. So it really entices players to kind of keep engaging with this. 
Um, and last but not least, fiction. Integrate into the game, design it into the game, not only when you're thinking about balancing, but about the fiction of the game. This is extremely important. Um, and after all, advertising is the lifeblood of capitalism, right? Um, one quick case study. So I kind of covered examples from idle games and a little bit of uh, animation throwdown, which is a CCG. Uh, this is a different type of game, Burrito Bison. It's one of the uh, Congregate.com classics. And uh, we basically shared all of this information with the team. And this is the implementation that they uh, decided to put into the game that has had the same results as we see with the other games. Um, so for those who don't know Burrito Bison, it's a launcher game. So you kind of launch your luchador across the screen, and you're trying to get as far as you can, kind of bouncing off of those gummy bears. So while you're doing your run, a piñata will show up. And once you hit the piñata, you have it. It doesn't interrupt your game. Once you finish your pl kind of that run, uh, the piñata shows up and tells you, uh, I have lots of goodies, as any piñata would have. Um, and you can open it with uh, watching an ad. So you watch your ad, you hit your piñata, tap, 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 and you get your rewards. And you can apply these rewards to your next run. So for this, we see same, about the same KPIs that I was talking about. 60% of players engage with ads, uh, and they watch about five ads per day. So quick summary, um, a successful ad integration, make sure that you design it. Not, don't wait till the last moment and just throw it in there and hope that players engage with it and hope that you generate revenue off of it. If you do it very consciously, you are going to be able to generate significant revenue out of ads. Um, so design, make it easy to access, add it into the fiction of the game, see how, how it fits into the game, uh, balance the game th thinking about these rewards. You don't want to break the balance of your game by adding, a, hey, I'll double all the rewards. That is awesome. Don't break the balance of your game. Balance it thinking about these. Um, and also, don't have them compete with your IP. That's key. So um, they have to be meaningful, but not competing with your IP. If they're competing with your IP, then you are going to cannibalize your revenue. Um, and you know, mix them up. Put them in different uh, places, have different rewards. Make sure that you're keeping your players engaged. Uh, and the last piece here, and this is once, once you've mastered, um, you know, you have your uh, mediation, you have a lot of networks running, you've hit your percent DAU and ad views, you feel like you're, you have those things nailed down. Um, this would be the next step, which is once you have all these networks running in your game, uh, it's not one of those things of set and forget. Um, you actually have to be constantly managing it if you want to generate even more revenue. Uh, this is one of the things that uh, we keep doing, we keep checking on a basically daily to weekly basis to make sure that we're optimizing the best we can. Um, so the mediation layers do have some challenges where not always, they don't always uh, prioritize the network with the highest CPM to the top. And we've seen this happen every now and then, and they have blips here and there. So um, one th good thing to do is just always keep checking what's being prioritized to make sure that the network that is generating the highest DCPM is at the top and generating the most impressions. And the mediation uh, providers actually accommodate for this. So. In this case, uh, we have three networks uh, prioritized manually, where we know that we're getting either um, a really good deal, or you know, networks change. The traffic that they have in the network changes as uh, people are doing user acquisition. And you're going to see these things fluctuate. So you want to make sure that you're staying on top of them. And then we let the waterfall just do the auto optimization we don't manually prioritize every single network. That would be 
uh, a lot of a lot of manual work, and there's also diminishing returns. There's a point where you just you're going to do the same thing that the algorithm is going to do. Um, so once we do that, we can actually, uh, in this hypothetical example of eCPMs, make sure that the highest CPM network is being prioritized at the top, which means that you're getting the most impressions for the highest value network. Um, so just a quick reminder, ads are an easy win if you do it and you design them properly. Uh, keep in mind to optimize your fill rate, integrate multiple networks, use ad mediation, don't do it manually. Uh, maximize your impressions. You can do this by integrating your ads into the core loop, have multiple placements, meaningful rewards, and make it part of the game, make it fun. Uh, and keep an eye on the ad networks. Uh, you don't have to do it uh, as intensively as we do it, but if you n check every week, kind of as part of your live ops cycle, that already gets you that much farther. Any questions? Okay. Hi, thank you for the talk. So when you talk about um, not uh, making the rewarded videos compete with the purchases, do you mean uh, by not showing rewarded video to people that pay? or creating different mechanics or both? How do you deal with that? Yeah, so usually we don't remove ads from the game just because you are providing, like, when you have a bonus for a player, if you remove that, you're removing a part of the game for the player. So when we talk about not competing with IP is providing something different that the IP would. So for example, um, very simple example, an adventure capitalist, your IPs are, uh, time warps where you can kind of fast forward time, that's one of the main uh, IPs versus your uh, rewarded video gives you a multiplier on what you're generating. So that is giving you kind of, it's even different parts of the economy touching different parts of the economy of the game. So that, that's what we mean mostly about uh, not competing is touching different parts of the economy. So players see the benefit on, on doing both. And when they do, what ends up happening is that your payers are your most engaged uh, players with your ads. So quick example, there's another game where on average uh, players watch four to five ads per day, uh, but if you segment it out by payers, you see them engaging with about 10 ads per day. So your most valuable players are kind of touching both systems at the same time and maximizing the game. If you do want to have um, an option to remove ads, that's, that's an option. Um, just make sure that you do the math and yeah. you're not losing revenue from removing the ads. Hi there, um, th thanks for the talk. A question that I've got, uh, just kind of about ads in general, it seems like maybe outside of a few major territories such as the US, the vast majority uh, of video ads are for other games. So it kind of feels that you quite often you're incentivizing your players to just go download a competitive product. Is this something that, that concerns aggregate, at, uh, congregate, excuse me, concerns congregate at all, or is this something that you guys are just not worried about? Um, so it's something that we've analyzed because, you know, it is, you could, you could think it's like I'm basically cross-promoting a different game. Um, so we've done actually a lot of analysis on this and we haven't seen any attrition of players going to other games. So it's one of those things that we keep in mind, we keep an eye on, but we haven't seen any negative effects. Yeah, I, I have a quick question. You talk about uh, uh, ad mediation company. Uh, could you please name a few of those companies because I'm not familiar with that. Uh, we only use AdMob. Uh, for our uh, games? Yeah, so the two that we've uh, tested uh, personally at Congregate are Iron Source, which is the one that we use now for all of our games, and Fiber. I know that there's more uh, mediation networks out there, but those are the two that we're familiar with. Uh, Fiber. Yeah. Hey. Um, 
So we have ads in our game. They work really well. We do events, and we find our engagement with ads goes significantly up. Uh, so far, the ads in our events have mirrored the ads in the main game. We have an interest in branching out and experimenting pretty drastically with some of the ad settings in our events. Is there a danger around that? Would you recommend it? Um, so is, there, is your question, is there a danger in experimenting with uh, ads on during your events? Yeah, like say uh, players are used to getting an ad every hour for 15 premium currency if we wanted to double that amounts of currency or half the time. Uh, would we create a negative player behavior by doing that? Uh, so one thing that I would always keep in mind uh, and just test away, that, that's one of the things that I, I would tell uh, anyone, one of the things to keep in mind is it's harder to take away something from a player. So if you do, do it too aggressively, so if you give them too much, they will notice if you're like, oh, never mind, I'm going to give you less, they're going to notice that. So just be careful with uh, how you're testing. It's always easier to give players uh, incrementally more and more slowly than to give them too much and then take it back. If you're doing it during your live events, uh, it depends on the events that you're running. If you have different types of events, maybe you try different uh, surfacing depending on the event so that it just seems like it's part of the event that it's uh, why it's different. Okay, hello. Um, so uh, I, when you were uh, managing the ad networks and you had the top three ad networks, um, are you ordering them by uh, eCPM when you um, manually set them? Because I've also tried doing that on mediation, but what I've noticed is that um, when you change the order of the networks, like the first impression is not worth the same as like the second or third yep. impression. And when you change them, the CPM of the second network, even though it was higher when it was first, would just go down when you put it in first place. So what criteria do you actually use to determine the order of the networks that um, you manually set on, I guess, fiber, it looks like? Yeah, so we, uh, the way we do it is, uh, first we, we do start with this uh, CPM. A lot of what we do is also get kind of guaranteed CPMs with networks. So if we already have a guaranteed CPM, we're gonna bump them to the top. Um, but one of the things that we also look at is uh, instead of CPM, it's a combination of CPM and engagement. So we actually do cost per engagement, and that's how we sort them. Because you're right, it is uh, the second time it serves, usually the CPM could go down. Um, so it's a combination between the e CPM and the engagement. So if you multiply those two, you get your cost per engagement. Hi. Uh, how come every ad I see is always for fucking Gabe? And uh, <laughs> you know, and then you go across these five different networks, and they're just showing you the same bloody fa Final Fantasy ad that I've seen eighteen thousand times. Uh, like I've installed your game, dude, and I've played your game. Like, why you keep on pushing it on me? And how do you deal with that? Like, do you find that as you go across all the different networks, uh, you're still getting the same CPMs or engagement? How is that being measured? Because we know the ad networks; they're all up to something, and they're screwing around with the numbers in the back end. <laughs> like, how do you how do you know what's working? Uh, that, that's a great question, yeah, so, uh, and that, that's kind of the ecosystem with the ads, right? Like, there's a, a, a big game company that can throw money at networks, and they'll get the first serve on every single network. Um, so, basically, uh, what we do is we work directly with networks, um, as I was saying, to get some guarantees uh, and we sometimes limit, like part of the guarantees is how many ads are they going to serve at the top. And uh, we talk to them to figure out if it's going to be like just the same, you know, Final Fantasy game over, over, ad over and over again. Um, honestly, we haven't seen any attrition from players and seeing the same ad over and over again. It almost seems like players just tune them out at that point. Um, so it's one of those things that we keep an eye on but we're not really uh, very stressed about. Okay, that's it for, so thank you, Tammy, very much for that thank session. You.